Uh, my name is Chris Sweat, and this is my wife, Denise. Uh, we're here with my two kids, Sarah and Anna. We're here on uh, Sweat Farms. We farm right at 1,100 uh, rented and owned land. More cows than any other uh, species, but we also run sheep as well. Um, I was born into farming. We've been farming on, on you know, right here where, we're, where we live for four generations now. Um, I met Denise. Uh, she was from a farm family as well. We met in actually when we was in uh, college and high school, we met showing cattle. But then after we got married, we moved back here uh, to the farm and we, we wanted to start our family here just like kind of we like I grew up. So that's what we did. We moved back here and uh, started growing the operation. I work for Farm Credit. I'm a regional vice president for Farm Credit and manage five offices for them. I started as, as an intern back in 1999 and then after I graduated college, come on full time with them and have worked my way up through the years. Chris has taught agriculture. He was teaching before I got out of college. We got married while I was still in college and he was teaching ag and taught ag for 25 years and then he's retired from ag, so he's, he's farming full time now. We both chose roles to work uh, that involved agriculture. So um, even though we might have, might not be farming all day, we're, we're helping farmers in everything that we do. You know, we have two girls and uh, both of them are very, very active in uh, agriculture. Uh, both of them are in FFA, both of them are in 4-H. Um, we're very blessed that um, we, you know, we've got friends and stuff in our 4-H club that are very active in uh, public speaking and our, da our daughters have really taken to that and livestock judging. Uh, it, it makes my heart swell with pride that, you know, I, I was on a state winning uh, livestock team, so was Denise and uh, both our girls have been as well. It's, it's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of mornings that I'd rather, I wish I could sleep in, I wish I could, you know, all, the, all of my friends in high school, not many of them had farms, so you know, they were always going to the lake or hanging out and I had to get up and take care of show cows and work cows. And so it's something that you think about and you know, some mornings I wish I could sleep in, but I honestly wouldn't trade it for the world. It means a lot to know that I'm learning lessons from people that have been through the same experiences that I'm doing now. Like Sarah mentioned, it's sometimes better to stay quiet because they've been through those things and you can learn a lot from just watching. At the sheep and goats buying station, it's fun to work with your family because you know everyone's got a role to contribute to the industry that we're trying to build at Hope. And it's exciting and sometimes nerve wracking when you've got a bunch on a big sale to get it right. But you know if you do make that mess up, I've got my dad in the ring, he'll help me out, and Sarah on the pen inside, I know that she's skilled enough to do it. And I feel like it helps us build as a family to work together. Everybody told us you can't raise sheep and goats in South Arkansas because there's no market for them. You have to ship them too far to sell them. So um, a lot of times if you have something that comes up that's uh, you know, a hindrance that just prods you to find solutions. And that's kind of what we did. We, we went and built a market. Um, everybody said, well, you know, you won't be able to sell 50 head of sheep in Hope, Arkansas. Uh, our largest sale that we've had was 1,000. Uh, after that, we decided to go into a buying station. And we knew the buying station wasn't going to be uh, the fix for long term. But we knew it was a short time fix. Uh, last year, we was just a few dollars shy of half a million. Uh, worth of sheep and goats sale dollars wise. Uh, projected this year is going to be a little over 600. Within another three years, we're probably going to be staring right at a million if nothing happens. Uh, and I can truly say that the, the sheep and goat thing is one of the things that we made an impact. Uh, we have built, not single handedly, but uh, between Mr. Duckett and myself and several other people, we've built the sheep and goat industry in southwest Arkansas. We always run right around 300 cows. Um, we have a set of uh, registered Angus cows. We have a set of registered Simbra cows and a registered herd of uh, um, Simital cows. This herd here is actually recip cows that uh, we contract the calves out of them from people across the United States, send us embryos, and uh, we put the embryos into our cows and then we raise them for other people. On a, on a contract. So we know that when we get a calf on the ground, he's, he's pretty well already sold. Um, you know, if you're gonna be successful in farming, 
Uh, you can't just sell a, a product. You know, you got to sell a service. Uh, we're, we finally found a niche that we could sell a service and a product. And uh, through the embryos, it helps us sell a service. Chris's goal is to be happy and retired. <laughs> <laughs> but our goal, I tell you this, our goals is uh, I want to see my kids come back here and add to it. Um, if our kids can come back here and make a living uh, doing what we're doing, then I think that's uh, I think that we'll count that as a win. I, you know, in, in terms of direction of our farm, I don't know that. Uh, I think a lot of people get stuck in a rut and they want to make sure they all go in. You know, they set a goal and they want to go in one direction. You know, I don't know. Next year or for ten years from now, you know, we may be putting in more embryos or we may be running. You know, raising turnip greens out here. I don't know. You've got to, I think you've got to have a little bit of flexibility when you farm. I let my kids have a lot of input in it. Uh, you know, if, if, if they want to go in a direction and we can justify it, then that's what we do. Um, there's a lot of things we don't have flexibility on and, you know, and we don't have flexibility when it comes to, uh, you know, the integrity of the land, the integrity of our, of our family. We want to do stuff that, um, that, you know, my great grandfather would be proud of. You know, when I was in school, when I was in high school, uh, we had a teacher tell us one time that uh, you find a job that you like and you'll never work a day in your life. That's false. That's absolutely false. Um, farm is hard work. It's hard work. Um, it's getting out there and going to work, you know, every day, saddled with debt, saddled with uh, high input costs, uh, saddled with the uncertainty of uh, the the weathers saddled with uncertainty of uh, the markets uh, but it on the flip side of that you know I wouldn't choose anything else uh, if I had to do all over again I do that every day 